preferred vendor for the purchase of six boards of glass in the amount of $4,680 with $2,340 to be reimbursed through the Department of Justice plus six grants and 2340 to be funded with state forfeiture funds. Uh, Chief Blair. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, yearly best grant we applied and received it again, 50% match. Um, in 16-17, we had 42 best used, and this year we're looking at right around 30, so that's about 800 bucks a piece. Okay. Uh, Councilman Ward. Good question, Chief. Like when uh, the expiration date passes on a best, are we able to trade those in, or do we just throw them away, or how does that work? Uh, actually, we do keep those vests. Um, okay. That's just an expiration date on them. We use them for training purposes. Okay. okay. Actually, shot them up sometimes. Okay. Uh, Councilman uh, Chief, on the ability to stop sharp weapons, are they, I know things have advanced <laughs> been around whether they like the, I know they're ultra light, that's for sure. The real nice thing about Fast Media that improved from uh, your time is that we put a little bit better panels inside of them. Okay. They're not puncture resistant unless you have two travel places. Now we have two, we have one up front and one directly in the back where okay. the spine. So um, we do have some puncture protection, but primarily it's just about what you had when you were around. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, a lot lighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how long do they go for? Five years. Five years. Yeah, standard five years. Any other questions for Chief Blair and Simon? All right. Next on the agenda, item nine, the motion to approve the request for removal of administrative fees and late charges from 1122. <coughs> Keep Cod, citation number as stated for yard, weeds, and litter. Um, this one uh, was sent in um, as well as you can see the attachment. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I'd like to address that. I think Michelle and I tag team uh, on this one. Uh, what's going to happen tomorrow is the taxpayer intends to be present and would like to have an audience with counsel. Uh, the, my assessing department um, aired in 2017 when we were entering the information off of our PTA property transfer affidavit. We entered properly the uh, mailing address of the property, but we did not change ownership's name from Capitol Hill Land Investments to uh, Muhammad Tariq. I believe. So what happened is recently uh, PAS sent out tickets and they issued them correctly for the weed, but they were issued to the wrong owner. And the taxpayer, my discussion with him personally, he does not dispute the ticket, but he likes <coughs> to have the overages dismissed and just pay the ticketed amount. And that's what he may bring to you tomorrow, but it's up to council to decide that. I'm just presenting the fact that he may present again to you tomorrow. So the, uh, he wasn't getting the ticket because probably somebody redirected those Correct. So right. what happened, the uh, district court mailed the tickets to Capitol Hill Investments with the proper mailing address of the owner in the Orchard, mm -hmm. Orchard Woods, West Bloomfield, Michigan. So they were mailed to the proper address, but under the wrong owner's name, under the prior owner's name instead of the current owner's name. Oh, okay. What is it, the same address? Do they live at the same? No, so it's, uh, Capitol Hill was a, was a owner before uh, this investor bought it in 2017. So we would just be, now see, I'm, I'm okay. Now, are the administrative fees, those are, those come with the tickets, correct? Not the late charges. Because I'm willing to, you know, I can understand the late charges possibly. But the administrative fees, if they, you know, it, there's, Usually when you receive a ticket, there's an administrative fee to go along with that. So I don't, I don't know if I can I would suspect that's true. Right. I don't deal with district court fees, but I believe that that's correct. I okay. can ask Marissa Fowler, who we deal with, what the uh, actual breakdown is. How much were you talking about? <coughs> Yeah, I guess I would like to... Uh, right. Yeah. 
receipts on the back. Sure, it's like three payments of three seven. I don't know what the actual bill was and what portion he wants refunded. Well, I think they well, have it. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. okay. So awesome. I'm wondering if, if the administrative fee <coughs> is twenty five or uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, there'd be a hundred and twenty in the late charges. Would that be correct in this way? Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. I, I have okay. something for that with uh, yeah. Dave Rock. Okay. We'll figure that so out. You paid the ticket, but he didn't pay the. He's disputing. I well, think he paid it all, but he's disputing yeah. the, the late fees oh, and, and the administrative fees. But that could be false. Right. Well, the administrative yeah. Can we get a, make sure we can get a breakdown? Because that, that's not in here as far as how it, what, what, and what he did pay and what, first what he didn't pay. So sure. okay. um, if we can get that for tomorrow. I'll so have we can make a decision on what we tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. I'm still kind of confused on the address. Capital investments is 6401 Orchard Woods. But his address is 6401 Orchard Woods, correct? No. No? I'm confused. See, that's what I thought. Owner occupied address is in West Bloomfield, 6401 Capital Hills Investment is 6401. So that's where I'm confused. Does he own Capital? <laughs> yes. Yeah. If, if, if this is just a matter of a routing issue, everything he would have been still responsible for other than the late fee. The administrative fees would have still been assessed right, right. regardless of yep. the right. only thing that, that if there was an error getting the bill to him, the only, I guess, amount in question would be the actual lady. Right. right. And that's what I'm willing to work with. But yeah. I need to know how they're broken up. So I'll give it to Keith. Maybe Keith can look it up. It's probably easier for him to pull it. And get for an administrative fee. So it's the only one. I was saying he got it, but it wasn't in his name. It was in his name. I think we're just kind of having a side conversation. I think he's admitting and acknowledging that, yeah. that he had the problem and it, it was taken care of. He's willing to pay for the cleanup, doesn't yeah. want to pay for the administrative fees, and doesn't want to pay for right. the late fees. But I agree with Caroline. I think it went to the place well, he Well, if lived. I get it, it says capital. And yeah, he's I mean, just trying to it's find the technicality right. and saying, oh, well, it wasn't addressed to me. Right, that's It was addressed to the, yeah, uh, you can't open People, people, people don't open it. <laughs> <up. laughs> yeah. Some people don't open the mail not addressed to them, and they, they say turn to sender. Right. Or they don't the late fees. Right. So if we can find out what the lease is, that's where we go. Yeah. Um, as far as um, this gentleman being a, a property owner in the city, are you aware of any other properties that he owns? Yeah, because he must have a lot. He must have a lot. I have not checked yet. I'll answer that question also. I'm just curious if we've had other issues. Yeah, yeah. With that's the uh, group we met. Yeah, that I don't know if I can find out. I, I really do. I know the card is on my in my office, so I'll have a check. I'm just looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, because the actual yeah. address is on Cape Cod and Taylor. So that, yeah. Yeah, and I don't I don't disagree with what you said, but yeah. if you own lots of properties and Cheryl sure. comes to you from the city of Taylor and you've gotten similar type letters right. in the past, you may yeah. be inclined to take a peek at it. Uh, is there any other questions from council on this item? All right. We'll move on to item 10, the motion to approve the request from Amadeus <coughs> for a waiver from the restrictions of the city of their noise ordinance, section 20-54B12, construction noises, construction equipment, to allow nighttime work on I-94 from Telegraph to Inkster. Um, this is item 10, and this is Mr. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Mayfield here. Right here. Oh. All right, Mr. Mayfield, go ahead. And I was planning to perform some construction work on I-94 from Telegraph to I-275, pavement repair, localized pavement repair, and bridge replacements. Westbound Beach Daily and Westbound E-Course are going to be reconstructed. So we're going to scheduled to start in the spring. Uh, I don't know the duration of the project. They didn't give that. Uh, my guess would be about six months. Uh, they're looking for the waiver in case they have to do 24 hours work in order to uh, expedite the project and get things open quicker. It's not a mandate, it's not, a, uh, not put into their schedule at this time, it's just that uh, they want to have that option when it happens to be able to move quickly and work uh, 24 hours. What is um, their expectation of using this um, if we do approve this request? I mean, is this something that 
um, they expect to use once, none, no times? I mean, what are, what are they? The last 30 what are they for the projects. Yeah. yeah. There were, um, say on the I-75 project, there were only a handful of days throughout the project that they worked on local areas 24 hours. Uh, generally, it was just two shifts on 24 hours. What was their uh, protocol for if a resident calls in with a complaint about the noise, and uh, of course the city has approved it, um, what is their protocol and how to contact MDOT? Because obviously the city wouldn't, you know, it would be something that MDOT has to hear directly, and is there a number that they would call for that? I am not sought uh, addresses from the city for everyone within a half mile radius of I-94, and they're gonna be sending out notices to all those people regarding the project and also the date for a public hearing or a public meeting that they want to hold to keep to inform the residents or whoever's interested as to what's going on. So I would imagine in that letter would have contact information regarding this. Um, Greg, did they did they see any changes to the exit coming up?